we're on our way to the reworking of the code of ethics of our country and hence the code of ethics of this you know on a global scale uh, I'm going through all of this right now for the purpose of uh, just tying in a little bit uh, this whole encyclical encyclical letter that uh, Pope Pi that Pope Pi Pope Benedict the Sixteenth released the other um, on the seventh of this month. If you weren't clear on it before when I mentioned it uh, the first time I was on the uh, you know I, I held this program if you were listening to the first program or the first one or two programs that I did. If you're first time listening right now, well, good to have you here with us, but you need to come up to speed and see one thing. Notice that the Pope is calling for a new econ economic infrastructure, on a new global economic infrastructure. Now, this is something that cannot come into fruition without the collapse of the U.S. dollar. And I say this not, a, not on my own accord, but from the direct statements made by the leadership of China and Russia that spoke at the previous G8 meeting, uh, not this one, in which they were, uh, when they were discussing the whole uh, economic downturn, it was clearly mentioned that we need, and when I say we, I'm talking about the global community that we need a new uh, a new um, currency to be the standard of commerce for the world and after the Bretton Woods meeting which took place quite some time ago now at that meeting uh, the US dollar was established as the standard for all the standard you know the, the standard of commerce globally because at that time the US dollar was the only currency that was backed by gold we know that that is a thing of the past right now but nonetheless it was a reality at that time so what we're dealing with what, what the what the global community is still dealing with right now in reference to the the dollar is it's still the standard but it's no longer backed by gold but everybody's bound to it and it's problematic for the US dollar to be this standard to be the standard if they want to establish a new economic a new global economic infrastructure so to make a long story short the US dollar has to be completely put out of the way. Now, so there's a direct link behind the destruction of the U.S. economy, the deflation of the dollar bill, the devaluation of the dollar, the establishing of a new economic order, and the ushering in of the Pope as a sovereign moral authority over this new one world order that these gentlemen along with the Vatican would like to see become a tangible reality in a very short period of time from the time that we're right now speaking or talking with one another, entertaining one another. Um, and I just think that's something that you really need to keep in mind as you listen to these ridiculous statements that are coming from uh, President Obama. Just recently, after the G8 meeting, President Obama said that uh, the world economic situation is is getting better now. <laughs> Everything is it's beginning to it's beginning to uh, level out right now. It's getting better right now. This is, this is the statement that Obama just recently made, that the economic situation globally is getting better right now. But ladies and gentlemen, if the U.S. economy is not getting better, then the global economy cannot get better.
You see, Europe doesn't have the power needed to rectify the problem that we're dealing with right now. Um, under the, uh, what was it, uh, the Bush administration, all right, it's Margaret Thatcher, Bush, and I believe Bush, France, uh, Mitterrand, they came together and uh, they made an agreement imposing imperial management over all Western and Central Europe, okay, under which all of Central Europe, are, they're not allowed to create cur any currency, they're not, a, they're not allowed to create a currency or to establish a national credit system, okay? They are not allowed to establish a currency or a national credit system. So we can't, so the world cannot look to Europe to, rat to, to rectify this problem. There is only one nation on the face of this globe that has the ability to pretty much bring this whole global economic mess out of the toilet, and that's the United States of America. And China and Russia are completely aware of this because China, you know, they have their hat, they have their hand way too far in the cookie jar right now to pull out. When I say that, they, they <laughs> They're way in too deep with us here in the States, so if we go down, they go down, all right? And China and Russia, they're both calling for a new financial regime. And it, it really all has to have, everything just weighs upon what will happen here in the U.S. And I'm saying this because we have Obama saying everything is getting better on the world scale. Everything is getting better. It's panning out. It's panning out. And yet California is still discussing the fact that they're going to be giving IOUs to government workers. <laughs> and if you're not aware of it, California is the largest economy. Well, well, let me take that back now. This is a past statement. California had the largest economy of any other state within the United States of America. Now, California at one point had the sixth largest economy in the world, period. They could separate from the United States as, as its own sovereign nation and be the 10th largest economy. And California's economy is going down the toilet right now. And there is not one penny of relief money or bailout money being allocated to California to help rectify the situation that's going on over there. Now, it doesn't take a college degree or even a GED at that to simply do the mathematics on this situation. If you tie a large, large lead weight on the ankle of a man that can hardly walk and then throw that lead weight into the ocean question, what's the probability that this guy that's already having a trouble stand, ha having some trouble standing is going directly down into the ocean with that lead weight? This is, this, this doesn't take, this doesn't take a lot of brain power, ladies and gentlemen, to see what's going on. The reason why relief is not being sent to California is because California can very well be the vehicle by which the rest of this teetering economy will fall and crumble, paving the way for what they already want to establish, 
and that is this new financial 